Hello, everyone. So the next section, which is entitled uh, 3.8 Implicit Differentiation, allows us to look at problems where they're just not as simple as all the other ones. So like, for example, I don't know if you've noticed this, but every single problem we've done so far had for, they had a form like this y equals some function of x. In other words, it was always one variable uh, defined explicitly in terms of another variable. So like the like I said, like examples are y equals 3x squared plus 4 or g of t equaled e to the t squared minus 1 plus t to the fourth. All right, or even something complicated like um, h of y equals the square root of 2y plus parenthesis 3y minus 4y squared all raised to the fifth power. We saw an example like that. I'm just, I'm just making these up. But the most important thing is on the left-hand side, you got one variable or an output. On the right-hand side, that output is strictly defined for one specific uh, variable, whether it be x, t, or y. The question becomes... How do we find the derivative for, and let me write it, I'm going to write it like this because this notation we're going to use. So find dy dx for x squared plus y squared equals 9. Okay? Now, above, all of these forms are what we call explicit equations or just more simply just explicit forms meaning one variable is solved in terms of another variable explicitly there there are no if ands or buts it's just you, you know you got one variable on one side and the other variable on the opposite side if i wanted to find dy dx the derivative is telling you hey let's let, let's differentiate this uh for y with respect to x the problem is there is no way to explicitly solve for y here, all right? You, you just can't do it. Um, I'm gonna show you what you have to do, which is, and if you didn't recognize this, this is just a circle with radius three. You gotta subtract x squared from both sides, and that's gonna give you y squared equals nine minus x squared, but here's the thing. When you go ahead and do the next step of the problem, which is take the square root of both sides, you cannot forget to include the plus or minus out front. Remember, at the very start of this, I told you that this is a circle with radius 3, okay? So this is going to give you y, plus or, y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. Um, for my TI-84 or 89 people, all right. If you were to, like I said, if you if you were to type this into your calculator, let me give you a second here. There we go. So if we were to type this into Desmos, all right, you got to remember you need y equals uh, the square root of nine minus x squared. But notice that only gives you the top half of the circle. You also need the bottom half. So you need y equals negative. Oh, I don't know what's happening there. Something's going crazy with my computer. And just like that, with the magic of editing, I am back. I have no idea what happened with my, my computer there. But we're going to go back. We got the top half of the circle. Now we're going to give the bottom half of the circle... And there's our bottom half right there. And I'll just make it the same color so we can all see it. Now, a lot of students forget about that. That when you take the square root of both sides, you're going to have plus or minus. So you get both sides. Um, that's for my TI-80 whatever people. For my Desmos people, what I why I love Desmos so much is you can just literally type in the equation exactly the way it looks. 
You do not have to explicitly solve for a variable. It'll just automatically graph it for you. So now the question becomes this. Okay, well, now that we've noticed that this is a circle, okay, how do we find a derivative of this? Because you got two different functions of x here. You have the top half and then you have the bottom half. So what we use is a technique called implicit differentiation. Okay, we're going to use implicit differentiation. And what implicit differentiation allows us to do is it allows us to take all the techniques that we've learned and just apply them to problems that really you you got to have an ex, you know, you got to have an explicit equation for it. So let me show you what I mean here. So if our example is find dy dx Four x squared plus y squared equals nine. Notice this dy dx that 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 it's like the we could use the chain rule there. Our independent variable is the x, so this is the independent or with respect to. Our dependent variable is going to be the y. So whenever we see the variable y. We're going to use our chain rule with that. So let me show you how that works. So when I go ahead and do this, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. All right. And then the left, uh, the right side, the right side derivative is really easy. That's just going to be zero. That's easy. Okay. The left-hand side is also pretty easy because what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of each term and notice that in this second term right here, we're going to have to use a chain rule. Okay? So the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. But now what I, what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of 2y, or I'm sorry, of y squared, which is going to be 2y, and then I'm going to multiply it by y prime or dy dx okay and that's where that chain rule kicks in all right so now my net my last move is just solve for dy dx so i'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and lastly i will divide both sides by 2y to give me dy dx equals negative x over y. And that's how we implicit differentiate. What we do is we look for the dependent variable and we assign the chain rule to that because what we're doing is we're, we, we don't know what that function of y is. So remember, exp we cannot solve this equation explicitly for y. So it's going to be some function. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is when I take the derivative of that with respect to x, I'm going to multiply it by its differential, by y prime, because I know I have the function itself and multiplying it by its derivative or the chain rule. Because if you think about the chain rule here in this situation, so let me let me break out our specific example. Oops. So the derivative of this is going to be 2y to the first times the derivative of the inside, which is just the letter y, or dy dx. And then we just solve this for dy dx. So let me do another example here. Let me show you again how this works, okay? So we're going to find dy dx for x squared plus x, y equals y. Okay? So the dependent variable is y. The independent variable is x. So when I go ahead and differentiate both sides, so give me one second. Let me just write this out here. On the right-hand side, I'm going to get the derivative of y, which is 1, times 
dy dx. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to get, now this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. So on the left hand side, I get 2x plus, but notice here, let me highlight it for you. Notice there, that is going to be a product rule because you have two different functions that are being multiplied. So off to the right, I let f equal x, therefore f prime is just one. And remember, that's the independent variable. Derivative is just the same. However, I'm gonna let g equal y. The derivative is going to be one times dy dx. It is the derivative of y times the chain rule of that, which is dy dx. So when I go ahead and make my substitution, I get 2x plus the, der the uh, derivative of the first times the second. So let me write it like this. 1 times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now, just to clean everything up, I get 2x plus y plus x dy dx equals dy dx. Now from here, I know I need to solve for dy dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term and I'm going to move it to the right hand side of my equation because it contains a dy dx and on the right hand side I have another term that contains dy dx. So this is going to give me 2x plus y equals dy dx minus x times dy dx. Then I'm going to factor this out to give me 1 minus x times dy dx. And lastly, I will divide both sides by the quantity 1 minus x to give me 2x plus y all over 1 minus x equals dy dx. Okay, and that is that is the gist of this. Okay, that's going to be the gist. Let me do another one here. Find y prime for e to the 2x plus 3y equals x squared minus 2. Okay? So from here, notice the notation changed. I'm using y prime instead of dy dx, but the technique does not change. So I'm going to differentiate both sides. So let me just write this out real quick. All right, the right-hand side derivative is very simple. It's just going to be 2x. However, the left-hand side, you have e raised to a function. So the derivative of that is going to be e raised to the function 2x plus 3y multiplied by the derivative of the function. So the derivative of 2x plus 3y is going to be 2 plus 3 dy dx. Okay. If you wanted to, You, could cre you can keep that as y prime. That's still fine. Regardless, now what you have to know is that you need to solve for y prime. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and distribute. So I get 2e to the 2x plus 3y plus 3e to the 2x plus 3y times y prime equals 2x. I'm going to move the 2e to the 2x plus 3y to the right-hand side. So I'm going to bring this over to here. So that gives me 3e to the 2x plus 3y times y prime equals 2x minus 3e to the 2x plus 3y. And then lastly, I'm just going to divide both sides by 3e to the 2x plus 3y. And 
and that's going to give me y prime equals 2x minus 3e to the 2x plus 3y all over 3e to the 2x plus 3y. And that's going to be it for this example. <clears throat> now, the only, the only thing I can kind of do here is I can make you do more complicated problems. I can ask you to do more complicated problems. And what I mean by that is something like this. So let's look at the previous, or let's look at the, a problem from a couple examples ago. So given x squared plus y squared equals 9, find the equation to the tangent line. at the point 2 comma the square root of 5. Well, recall that y prime or dy dx, let me write dy dx, I think that's what we did, in, that's the notation we used. So let me go all the way back up here, we'll find it real fast. Negative x over y, perfect. So recall our derivative is equal to negative x over y. Now, remember, equation of a tangent line, you need three things. First, you gotta have your slope. Second, you need a point. Third, point slope form. So in this case, it's gonna be dy dx and once you do that you just solve for y and you're gold so let's go ahead let's do that so first is our slope well <clears throat> dy dx let me write it in red so our slope is going to equal negative 2 over the square root of 5 <coughs> now I'm going to leave it like that. I know, I know, I know. We were always taught rationalize the denominator, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I, th that's the last thing on my list. I want us to be able to just find equations of the tangent line. So my slope is negative 2 over the square root of 5. My point is 2 comma the square root of 5. So my equa equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus the square root of 5 which equals negative 2 over the square root of 5 times x minus 2. Now, if I wanted to, I can go ahead, distribute, and solve this for y. So distributing gives me negative 2 over the square root of 5x plus 4 over the square root of 5. And then I will add the square root of 5 to both sides. And if you needed to, you can go ahead and find a common denominator and all that stuff. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this. Still gives you the same exact result. It's just not completely simplified. The point I'm trying to make here is... Whenever you cannot explicitly solve for a variable, regardless of what the variable is, you need to use implicit differentiation. And that happens a lot, especially when we start talking about related rates. When we see related rates, an example of that would be something along the lines of, uh, if, we have a, if we have a cube, all right, so volume equals length times width times height. We, we, we remember that. A cube, more specifically, just has the sides all the same. So it's s to the third power. The question becomes, if we're filling up this cube with some liquid, all right, how fast is that actually happening? Well, that's nothing more than a change in volume with respect to time. You can figure that out. Now, the bigger question is, well, what if the sides 
are also increasing or decreasing. Then how fast is this filling up? So we're going to be looking at problems like that a little bit later. But for now, just understand how to do derivatives using implicit differentiation. And I'll see you in the next video.